If you didn't catch our video from a couple days ago, um, we found a dead raccoon on our property. In fact, the day before, I actually stumbled across the raccoon while I was mowing our grass. And the raccoon was acting really weird. It was, it was kind of hunched up a little bit and it, had, it was like face down, like, he, like its forehead was like down on the ground. And when I came up to it on my lawnmower, it didn't really move. So I sat there for a couple minutes and it finally it lifted up its head and it seemed really dizzy and it had some discharge um, from its eyes, like it had like, like eye boogers, you know? And I didn't think anything of it other than like, well, I, I don't know what to do with this thing. I guess I'll come back tomorrow and see if it's still there. Came back the next day and it was dead. So I had really moved very far from where it was originally the day before. And my first thought was, okay, I need to get rid of this thing. And we've tried before on our property to, to dig holes and bury things. For example, one time when we processed our chickens, um, a lot of the entrails and guts we didn't have a use for. And we didn't have pigs at the time, otherwise we would have fed it to our pigs. So Rachel brought it out back and we had planted a couple trees and she dug a hole about two feet deep buried some of the guts in the ground to help fertilize the tree because we didn't want it to go to waste. And the very next day we went out there and coyotes came and dug up the entire thing and, and ate it all. when we've had things die since then on the property, a lot of times we just bring it back to this fence row back here where I am now, and we just throw it back here. We let the critters come and get it, eat it, consume it, and basically give that carcass or those guts or whatever it is back to the environment. Some really good comments from you guys about uh, the raccoon and sickness that it possibly could have had. I talked to my neighbor because a couple years ago, I think the first year we moved in, my neighbor told me how he hates the chipmunks, so he poisons them, which I don't necessarily agree with, but it, it's his land and his right to do what he feels necessary. But I asked him, I said, have you been poisoning the chipmunks because I found a, a raccoon that was pretty sick? And he said, no, I stopped doing that. So thank you. I started doing a little bit of research on, on rabies and different diseases that raccoons can get and the symptoms they'll exhibit. And basically what I came across, which seems like the most likely scenario, is distemper. Um, I'll read you this little part here. Symptoms of distemper can include discharge from the nose and eyes. This raccoon had that, like he had like eye crust stuff all around him. Um, a rough coat, hair. His hair, his coat kind of seemed normal. Emaciated, he did seem quite skinny. He was, I've seen raccoons, big old fat ones. This one wasn't fat. Um, unusual behavior such as disorientating or 
wandering aimlessly. So that's really what I think it ended up being. I don't think it was rabies. It wasn't any aggressive behavior from him. No foaming at the mouth, anything like that. But one of the things with distemper is it can spread. It spreads through bodily flu fluids of whatever, whatever creature has it. Dogs can get distemper as well. Through feces, urine, and other bodily fluids can spread to other animals. So by bringing this raccoon back here to the woods and leaving it here for something else to consume it, is not responsible on my part. So what I'm gonna do today is we're gonna grab the raccoon. I got some pliers, I can, I can grab them by his little paw. We're gonna take him back up to that fire that I just made and we're going to roast some raccoon. Um, I feel kind of bad, um, but I, it's what's best for the environment and all of the other creatures and critters that we have living around here, so. So the bulk of that fire is that big giant uh, stump from that pine tree that I pulled out from our front yard right up there uh, about one week's worth of videos ago. So it should keep burning for a couple of days, I imagine. It's burning fine and the smoke's going away from the house, so that's good. Uh, P.O. Box, I wanted to get that info to you. Uh, I think it took three trips to the post office to finally get everything sorted out. We're set now. If you go to our main YouTube channel page, you know, where it has like our picture at the top and stuff like that. If you go to the about tab, um, in the description there of what our channel is all about is our mailing address. I don't wanna really post it like in each one of our videos. I just wanna keep it in one spot. That way if it ever has to change, we only have to update it in one spot. So that's where you can find our address if you wanna send something to us. Um, it's about 5 p.m. I've been home from work for about an hour now. Rachel just called, she's on her way. We're gonna take Dan up to the school tonight. I guess they have a college night where they have a bunch of different colleges in to speak about what they offer and stuff like that. And she wants to go and check it out. So that's where we're gonna head off to next. And we'll see you guys on the next one.